Hello, welcome here. My name is Sarah Therese and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys four sourdough recipes. These are my go-tos and I make these weekly. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here. This is my sweet sourdough bread loaf. I'm gonna show you how I make my hot dog hamburger bun hoagie buns as well as some flatbreads and cookies. So let's start off here. I do this in the morning. It's about 8 or 9 a.m. I think. I feed my sourdough starter the night before so when I wake up I can get going on this loaf. I'm going to mix together 130 grams of bubbly active sourdough starter, 330 grams of water. I'm gonna mix that together very well. And on top, sprinkle 500 grams of flour, nine grams of sea salt, and 65 grams of cane sugar. I'm going to work the dry ingredients together on top, and then I'm gonna take my spindle down towards the wet and really start to combine these ingredients. I am going to link the measurements of all of these recipes down below and I hope you can come back to this video to refer back to some of the instructions that I'm sharing and then over time uh, you'll just be able to do this by heart and it'll be super simple. I'm just showing you guys my weck jar, this is my sourdough starter, this is the home and then I am just discarding some of that as well because some of these recipes are discard recipes. If you're interested in my weck jars or or my mason jar lids or anything else, my tea towels, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront. I do my first stretch and fold of my loaf about an hour after I put it together. It is a sticky dough, so wet your fingers before you go and do some stretch and folds. I'll do about 10 stretch and folds here. And then this is a couple hours later from that and you can see my dough is creating more of a structured form. And for this dough, sometimes I get to about two to three stretch and folds during the day. Sometimes it's more like six or seven. It is a very gracious dough and if you're having a busy day, she is gonna support you through it all and you will still yield quite a nice loaf of bread. to take my dough out of my bowl and press all those gas air bubbles out and form a loaf. So you can see I folded it in on itself. I'm going to roll it. I'm re-wetting my fingers because this is more of a sticky dough and I will be uh, rolling it, kind of that rolling pullback motion to create a nice loaf top. I have some sesame seeds that I'm just obsessed with rolling the top of my bread into. I think it creates a beautiful crust. It smells good, it tastes good, and sesame seeds are really good for your body too, and my kids love them. I'm gonna put it onto a sheet of parchment paper and place it into my loaf pan. Again, this is linked in my Amazon storefront. If you want the exact dimensions, it's all there. Cover it with a wet cloth and then put it into the fridge overnight. In the morning, you're going to continue your work with it. I'm getting ready here <laughs> with my pretty pink apron. I've taken it out for a couple hours at room temperature to let it rise. I usually let it rise until it reaches about the top of the pan and then I'm gonna put it into the oven at 400 for about 25 minutes and I take it out right away and remove the parchment paper and put it onto a cooling rack. It has a lot of heat in it, obviously, and I want to make sure there's no condensation or wetness in this loaf. She is beautiful. I wait a couple hours before slicing into it because it has a bit of a chew versus maybe your more traditional soft sandwich loaf bread. 
but she is still so soft and delicious. I have this bread bag that I've had for like six months that I store my bread in and um, I keep it at room temperature. This doesn't last us more than a couple days just because we eat through it quite quickly. But after three days, I recommend putting it into the fridge. Okay, so if I could live off of two things, it would probably be uh, cookies and burgers, and if I had to put something else in, um, cheese, even though I can't really eat it. <laughs> These are sourdough oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. You're going to whisk together 200 grams of your discard, one cup of coconut oil melted and cooled, and it's gonna create the most amazing, almost condensed milk type of texture and then you're going to whisk in your cane sugar i use a half a cup and one cup of brown sugar two teaspoons of vanilla half a cup of i use unsweetened almond milk but if you can have milk or dairy you can use anything that you like and again whisk it together it's going to create like a caramel almost ribbon type of texture it is Beautiful, set that aside. And then into another bowl, you're gonna add one and a half cups of oats, two and a half cups of flour. I love adding just half a teaspoon of ground cloves to my cookies, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of sea salt. You're gonna mix this in really well. Combine your wet ingredients and make sure that there is no white flour bits. And then go ahead and add in whatever add-ins you like. I do chocolate chips and I mix this all together. I love dark chocolate chips. They are delicious. So you're gonna mix this in really well. I do this the night before I want these. So this is actually in the evening. I'm gonna cover them up, put them in the fridge overnight. About an hour before I want to make them, I'll take them out just so the dough can soften. It is quite a structured dough. So warm it up with your hands press it into that cookie sheet and you're gonna bake it for uh, about 12 minutes, not even. Uh, sometimes I do 10 if I want them to be just a little bit softer. They're delicious for ice cream sandwiches on their own. I love pairing these with a hot cup of black coffee. I store them on the counter most of the time, but after a couple days, I'll pop these into the fridge. I do not have a stand mixer, but I do have a bread machine, and this is just the best thing known to man. I'm gonna combine 200 grams of lukewarm water and two teaspoons of yeast. This is not cheating. I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait, yeast? Sarah, you're cheating. These are my quick sourdough burger buns. I will make these early in the morning, sometimes 6, 7 a.m., sometimes 8 a.m., but what I am doing here is because I'm not letting them sit overnight, I'm using yeast and water to create a bit of, they call it a poolish, to work alongside my sourdough yeast starter to make really fluffy burger buns. This is great for last minute stuff. And, um, and it works beautifully. You're also gonna combine 100 grams of bubbly sourdough starter, one and a half tablespoons of melted coconut oil, one egg, 450 grams of flour, a quarter cup of white cane sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. I put it all into my drum, and it's gonna go through a fermentation cycle. It's gonna go for about an hour and a half. If you have a stand mixer, you can put it in there, but I have my bread machine, and she will not only knead it, but will also rise it for me. After that time, I'm gonna take it out, put it onto the counter, and I can start shaping my burger buns. And I also do like making these in the morning, so at least I will have the sourdough benefits of it from being able to ferment during the day. This recipe can yield a variety of buns. So what I really like about it is that I can make eight large burger buns. I can make 10 to 12 hot dog buns. I can make six foot longs. 
Um, these buns can really just be anything you want them to be. I take my time with these. Again, I'm going to wet my fingertips and you'll see I'll leave for a little bit and then come back because what I'm doing is wetting my fingertips. If the dough feels too sticky, wetting your fingertips will help that dough not stick to them and you'll create just a nicer looking bun. So I'm tucking the ends under themselves and rolling the dough towards me. I first was starting with more of a round ball and then I went no I want to create these to be more like kind of short sub buns I find it's easy for my kids to eat these and um, they're just delicious I have these for peanut butter jelly sandwiches we have some beautiful local ham that I can always um, put into these sandwiches as well or hot dogs so once they're all done, I'm gonna cover them with, again, a wet tea towel and let them rise for about an hour. I'm going to pat some melted butter on top. You can use coconut oil here as well. And then I'm going to pop them into the oven to bake. These bake quickly and quite nicely. It takes about 15 minutes. And if you want a secret, when they're all done and still warm, brush a little more butter on top. It's gonna give them a satin finish and texture. Kieran also made us some coffee to enjoy. And for storing these buns, we have just a ton of Ziploc bags that we have used like hundreds of times to house different breads in. So I'm just gonna grab a nice clean one and put the buns in there. We'll eat these within a couple days and we just store them at room temperature. Now, moving on to these flatbreads. These are so nice to have on hand. It is a cup of warm water, three quarter cup of sourdough discard, a quarter cup of olive oil, really mix that together. And then you're gonna sprinkle three and a half cups of flour and one teaspoon of sea salt on top and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. These are amazing to be kind of like spare the moment flat bread pizza crusts. We love using them for tortillas or quesadillas as we'll do here. I'm gonna mix those dry ingredients on top with my fingertips and then move towards the bottom. I love this dough because again, it's a gracious dough. It's fun to knead and to really sink my hands into. And I'm serious, guys. Like, look at my serious kitchen face. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm in my zone and I'm in my happy place. So um, a straight face as I am kneading my dough, I'm going to make sure everything is well combined, cover it with a damp towel, come back to it about half an hour later, and then I knead it again one more time, roll it back on itself, cover it with a damp towel again and let it rest for an hour and then i will preheat my cast iron pan on about a medium to low heat give these things time to cook and we can get started so i like to heavily flour my surface just because these can be a little more sticky of a dough to deal with and wetting your fingers will not help you here you need to use flour this is a very elastic dough it's beautiful to work with i find that i can roll this very very thin and it'll still puff up really, really nicely. Um, if you do end up rolling it out too thin or you pull it up and it starts breaking apart, just roll it back into a ball, let it sit for a little bit, maybe tackle some of the other flatbreads and come back to it once it's rested. Put it on your pan, let it cook, flip it over. And this is actually what I made for the family for lunch today. We had some cheese, some local ham, some kale that I put on top, and then we just let it cook melt the cheese, and then that is what we're eating for lunch today. I had this as well, except in mine I did do goat cheese instead of the cow cheese, just because certain dairy I can't have, but girl can have butter and that's all that matters. For storing, I let them cool, put them into another well-used Ziploc bag, and I actually leave these in the fridge. 
If you enjoyed today's video, let me know in a comment down below. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to see from me and my channel, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.